What's up everyone, this is John with Skate Better and today we are doing the S Silo Shoe Review. Welcome back to another review. Finally gonna be doing these S shoes today. It's been a while. I can't wait to tell y'all what I thought. So first things first, size and price of the shoe. The size, I got an eight and a half. When I first put it on, it did feel really snug. However, it ended up breaking in right around where I love it. So I'd say just go with your normal size, know that it will break in, even if it feels super stiff. At least that was my experience. As far as the price goes of this shoe, it's really weird. I've seen it vary a bunch. I think on their website right now, most of them are on sale for about 55 to 70 bucks, somewhere in there. I've seen them brand new for 110, but I would recommend doing some searching first to try and get a deal. I feel like you can definitely find it at a better price. Okay, so let's talk about the shape of the shoe. I'm just gonna show you a close up of the top really quick so you can just get an idea of what it looks like in the bottom. Overall, it kind of has a wider shape here, but I would say that it didn't feel super wide when I had it on my feet. There's a lot of cushioning going on in the inside padding here. So this wall lining is quite thick. And then the tongue is a pretty thick tongue as well. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. And yeah, it had a snug fit, but it does feel a little bit wide if you're used to skating a skinnier shoe, like a Chuck or like a Vans, a slimmer Vans. I do think this is gonna feel wide and puffy, but did it fit wide and puffy? No, I'd say it fit pretty snug, pretty average. Now, as far as the outside and the bulkiness of the shoe, I would say it was pretty bulky. Just the width of the shoe in general, like total width of the shoe from the outer edge of this all the way over to the outer edge of this, it's a pretty wide shoe. So here's a comparison so you can see really quick, the S versus just like a regular pair of Nike Blazers. And they're significantly wider. Last thing I mentioned is it does have a nice smooth contour, a nice rounded nose, so it's not super pointy, but it's also not super square at the same time. Break into this shoe, pretty solid. I did not think that it was gonna break in at all, especially the toe box and the toe area. Like this suede, it felt super stiff. Everything felt stiff actually in the beginning. This thing felt like a rock. But it does break in, the suede does get really soft and does get swishy and does form a little bit more to your foot. As far as the outsole goes, this thing is like a tank. It doesn't really move at all. Like even right now, I'm having a tough time twisting it in my hands, but this, just know this outsole, this bottom here, so stiff. Probably Probably the stiffest outsole I've ever skated in a shoe. But overall break in, I would say after the first session, it actually broke in really well. Everything broke in except for the outsole. So going right into durability, once again, this thing is beast. The only really wear and tear that I have going on, there's a lot of fraying going on right here on the tip of the shoe. As far as the Ollie spot over here, it's almost flawless condition. Yes, there's been a little bit of this piece right here, has worn down the tiniest bit from kick flips. There's a little bit more wear and tear here on heel flip Ollie spot as well. Then the only other piece that's really showing wear and tear were the laces. The laces were trash. So I ripped the lace right away and I didn't want to switch the laces out because this is a very distinct color and I thought anything else would kind of look awkward. Last thing durability wise I want to mention is the sole this shoe did wear away very quickly. You can see it's very smooth in my kind of like adjustment spot for when I do tricks. So getting into impact, board feel, and flick next. The impact was fantastic. I definitely did not have an issue going down anything in the shoe. felt really confident trying things, jumping down things, maybe trying new things that I wouldn't normally try in the shoe because I felt really, really cushioned and supported. The board feel, kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. So if I'm being truthfully honest, least amount of board feel I've had in a shoe, I think ever. I'd give it like a two on a scale of one to 10. Yes, I have my footprint insoles in, but I put those in all my shoes so that it's an even playing field. I'm just talking about the outsole protection and what that offers. So the flick of the shoe was average. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't subpar.
I was hoping that this outsole here, this kind of thick piece that rubs around would be catching the flick really, really well. And it did for the first couple sessions, but then like I said, it did wear down a little bit. And I think it's just because it's such a wide shoe from particularly from here to here, it just took a little bit longer to get used to than maybe a shoe that I would normally switch into. General pros and cons of this shoe. Well, I actually love the colorway. It does have tongue secure on the inside, so it's got those little elastic straps that keep the tongue from moving around, which is nice. You do have a little loop here in the back of the heel and a loop on the tongue. I don't really use those, but if you do, that's a cool feature. Not a lot of protection for the laces. Rip to lace right away. Another feature I think was cool is this mesh kind of going panel through the side. It definitely helps the shoe breathe a lot. I've had a lot of shoes where you kind of skate with this uh, meshy kind of thing on the tongue and it either has immediately has holes in it or it has another layer underneath so it doesn't breathe. But this one actually really breathes. As chunky as a shoe that it is and this suede going all around with all the bells and whistles, it actually breathes a fair amount and I thought that was really cool. Another feature that's cool is this little thing in the back here, this little S logo and then also this silver strip that kind of runs down here is reflective. You probably can't see that because of the light but I just thought that was an interesting feature. And then I just have to say this was like the perfect tongue for me. It was the perfect amount of squishiness, perfect amount of padding. The padding went all the way down to my toes and it just felt really, really comfortable. So overall, comfortable wise, one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever skated. But then once again, just going back to the way that the board feel was and the flick of the shoe, had some issues there that I wasn't fully in love with it. And then very last thing I'll mention is it does feel like a very stable shoe. I wasn't really worried about rolling my ankle or anything and I felt like I had good protection to my ankle even though my ankle wasn't covered because it's so puffy, which is probably what you'd expect in a shoe like this from S. So final thoughts, would I buy this shoe again? Well, I think I would definitely try another S shoe, but maybe like the Silo SC, something that was a little bit less bulky, but I do like S. I did have a great experience. I do think durability wise, all, all in all, it's a fantastic shoe, and if you need a shoe to last you a long time, this shoe will set maybe the sole. I love what S is doing. They're definitely making quality shoes. This shoe is beast, and for what you pay, if you can get it for under 60 bucks, I do think it's a good deal, especially if you want a shoe to last you a long time. I hope you all enjoyed this review. If you have any other questions, please feel free to put those in the comments, and I will answer them. If you did like this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate you all so much. Take care. See you next time.